Right, let's look at this explanation that you've just read there. And you might find all that writing a bit confusing. So let's see if we can uh, do this visually and see if we can understand it. What we're looking at is our business. And I'm assuming our business, let's say, I think I call it ABC. In your business, your cash is an asset to you. So you would have a bank account. And that bank account would record all your receipts and payments. Now you take this money and you go and deposit it at the bank. That money is still your money, remember? So although you go and you put 10,000 into the, the actual physical bank, you don't actually have the money at the moment, it is in the bank, but it's still your money. So the bank has to keep records and they are going to say that you, you the business, become their liability. They owe you this money back. Now let's just have a look here. All right, so now here's the business and we've got a bank account which we know is an asset. Nedbank, our bank, where we're doing has will open an account for our business, but they will say they'll owe us money. So the first thing, in our bank account, we would have a balance brought down, let's say, of 5,000. That same balance will be on the credit side in the, the bank's account. So when they send me a statement or I request a statement at the, at the ATM, that count is going to show 5,000. Now, if I receive more money, so I'm going to receive more money, I'm going to add on another 10,000 Rand. That money is deposited in the bank and it will be a deposit, the bank will call it a deposit into the account of 10,000. You write a check out, so you've got a payment. And let's say you pay 8,000 Rand, so your money is going down, you're decreasing it. But now when it gets to the bank, the bank will say, look, we owe this business 15,000, but they're now uh, withdrawing 8,000, so that's reducing the amount that we owe them. So we're going to pay out, we're going to take the money out of their account. Right, so that's the first thing. You need to understand that when you compare your bank account to the bank statement, it'll always be on opposite sides. Now, the reason for doing reconciliations is that we need to control and we need to check that this bank account is agreeing with what the bank says we've got in our account. So we are going to do a comparison between the two and find out if there are any differences. Those differences could be errors, it might be things that have been left out, but we need to check. It's part of your internal control. Now, let me give you an example. The bank charges us. So we will have bank charges, which will reduce our account of 200 Rand. So the bank will minus it out of your account. However, you at this point don't know about it. So if you look at your balance here, your balance over here is not agreeing with what the bank is. There's a difference in your balance. So now when we do a reconciliation, we see, oh, this is a problem. Yes, it is my bank charges. So I'm going to go to my cash payments and put in a bank charges of 200. I'm reconciling. I'm finding out why there are differences. It could also be a time difference. These deposits, we might receive them on the last day of the month. The bank only receives them the first of the next month. And because they might be working in actual months, the bank might not have received it. We refer to that as outstanding. It's not an error. They just haven't received it yet. And likewise, your checks that you write out, if you write out a check, you've got actually the person's got six months to cash that, and then it becomes a stale check. If that check hasn't gone through the bank, in other words, the bank hasn't paid it out yet, they wouldn't have minused. So your balances will not be the same. And you've got to account for that. 
Now, just one thing I just need to draw your attention to. Your textbooks and your exam papers that often refer to checks. In reality in today, checks are becoming, are being used less and less and less. You need to be aware of the fact that most businesses today will make their payments by EFT, Electronic Funds Transfer. It therefore means that these amounts don't take six months to, to be transferred to the other person's account. It will be transferred with almost immediately or within two days. And so that process has all been simplified. So as you're working through the section, just remember what you're trying to do. You, you're trying to control your cash. You, you're trying to see that your books and the bank's books agree. Where they don't agree, you're going to update the other accounts.